Um, okay, so um, just got to move that. Thanks very much again. Sorry for the little technical glitch there. Um, so the Library of Congress uh, has a definition of um, ethnographic maps. What are ethnographic maps? And um, I'm not going to read that, but um, typically uh, when it comes to ethnographic maps, there are maps that show cultural areas and then maps that also show uh, just linguistic uh, groupings. Um, some are combined. Uh, so the definition is very um, broad and uh, uh, the American definition, of course, uh, calls uh, these uh, ethnographic maps, uh, American Indian um, maps, uh, whereas in Canada, of course, uh, we're using the term indigenous more commonly. So this is a map uh, showing, um, well, one of the first maps of the interior of British Columbia showing cultural groupings uh, by Archibald MacDonald. He was a factor for the Hudson's Bay Company and sketched this map in 1827. And it shows um, the different uh, groupings uh, with Kamloops here in the center, if you can see my cursor. Can you see my cursor? Yep, looks good. Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So uh, this is the Sequepmic or Shuswap uh, area. Uh, this is the Okanagan. And then we have what was called by him the Kutamine or the Inalakapamuk, the Thompson people and um, various other groups. Um, so this is uh, an interesting map because it shows uh, using hard lines, uh, the cultural areas uh, the boundaries between the cultural areas. Uh, and of course, we all know that hard lines uh, rarely exist uh, when it comes to human um, nature. And uh, so uh, this is a, a map that reflects his knowledge of these people at the time. This map by Albert Gallatin, he was um, uh, an ethnologist in the United States, also the uh, uh, Secretary Treasurer of the United States at one time. Uh, in 1836, produced this uh, map of the whole of North America, a map of the Indian tribes of North America about 1600 AD um, along the Atlantic and about 1800 moving west. So uh, from the information that he had at the time, he tried to compile, um, tried to create this map showing various uh, American Indian groups and also Canadian uh, indigenous groups um, from the information he had. Uh, what is unique about this map, it's probably the, uh, one of the first ones that used his uh, color. This is another map, an Aboriginal map of North America, denoting the boundaries and locations of various Indian tribes, as it's titled, produced in 1857, um, just prior to the Hudson's Bay Company losing Rupert's land and prior to the colony of British Columbia being formed. And again, uh, color, um, there's no hard boundaries shown, but the colors act as boundaries. Um, it's quite a, an attractive map. I'm going to show you a close up now, uh, a part of the map that shows the names of some of the First Nations. Uh, the Blackfoot is uh, seen here, and the Blood and Fall Indians, uh, all part of the Sioux or Dakota uh, grouping. Here, um, we don't have color, oops, can we go back, uh, Thomas? Is it possible yeah. to go back? I, it's on a timer, unfortunately. Uh, can you stop the timer? 
There's a timer. Yeah, there's a timer that uh, moves it ahead. Uh, I just wanted to mention that here are the shoe swappers equipment as they are called today. Uh, but notice the, the color is, um, well, I don't know if this is a light purple shade representing the interior peoples, but the shoe swap are not related to uh, the people uh, known as the Decal Indians uh, farther north. Um, so, you know, this is the lack of information that these, uh, that these cartographers had at the time. This is Aerosmith's 1857 map, the same as I showed you previously. And then here we have a map showing the distribution of the Indian tribes of British Columbia by W.F. Tolmy and G.M. Dawson. George Dawson, he was a geologist, but he had a great interest in ethnographic uh, information, which he included on his maps. So this map of 1883 um, shows the whole province. And here in faint red letters, oops, Again, in faint red letters here uh, is his uh, attempt to spell the name Shuswap Shikwepmuk, which is closer to the pronunciation, which is Shikwepmuk today. And um, the use of colors is uh, provided in a, a legend here. Uh, it's uh, quite an interesting map. It uses a, a, a topographic base map and then uh, imposes the the areas of the uh, First Nations groupings. This map also by Dawson um, shows uh, very clearly uh, uh, the tribal territories, again, using a hard line uh, between the different nations. This is the Shuswap or Shikwapmuk as he spelled it, the Okanagan, the Inlakapmuk who I mentioned, and um, the detail is is quite good. I mean, it's it's uh, very close to the approximation of uh, these First Nations territories today. Um, the Arrow Lakes is shown here, and um, I'll mention this area a little more. Can the uh, your record? Sorry, your presentation has a timer on it. You would just need to change the settings and you know exit the presentation. So. Let's just not do that. Maybe once yeah. it changes too soon, just click on your back or sorry, your left yeah. arrow on your keyboard. That, that, that's, that's what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you, thanks. Um, along comes a gentleman named James Tate, and this is his wife, uh, Lucy Anko. Um, they married about 1892. He was a Scotsman uh, who came over to work on his... Uh, uncle's farm, but he quickly became interested in the native peoples and um, lived with Anko and learned how to speak in Lakapamuk um, and learned a lot about the culture from her. This photo was taken by Harlan Smith, the uh, archaeologist who, who came to the area around this time, 1897. Now, I mention him because the next map is made by him. Um, this is another map showing the Shuswap or Sequepic territory by this bold black line and the surrounding First Nations, the Carrier, the Cree, the Stony, the Kootenai, the Okanagan, here's the Thompson or Inlakapamuk, Lillooet and Chilcotin, here's Kamloops. And um, within the Sequepic territory, he created divisions uh, that he uh, recognized uh, between the Sequepmic. There were variations in dialects and um, uh, a kinship affinity. So he shows that uh, that's what these letters are all about. Oops. Let me go back to that. Now, um, I mentioned uh, this area here, the Arrow Lakes area. Um, he realized after he had made this map and after it was published in 1909 uh, that he had made a mistake. Uh, and he, he 
bluntly confesses this. He says that my information was wrong about the First Nations of the Arrow Lake area. They, they belong to the Okanagan. They're the people known as the Sinaik. I believe Dan Cole is going to talk about that later. And uh, so he drew a map that you see here, um, which carves out that area. Uh, he calls them the Lakes uh, people, uh, the Sinaik people. And so the, the shoe swap area is reduced. So this is a, a case of where uh, maps, you know, this demonstrates that maps uh, change over time. These boundaries between First Nations groups um, are not hard and fast. They change uh, through migrations, wars, disease. There's all sorts of factors that, of course, uh, result in, in uh, changing cultural areas and linguistic areas. Now, um, moving along, coming to the present, um, or near present, in 1956, the government of British Columbia uh, published this map showing the distribution of ethnic groups in 1850. So here are the Salish Inn that includes the, the Shoe Swap and the, those other groups like the Thompson, the Lillooet, the Nicola, the Okanagan. And uh, this was really intended for educational purposes, uh, a, a, an atlas for school purposes. Then um, other organizations and uh, cartographers get into the game. Uh, this is produced by the National Geographic Society in 1970. 72. Fort Thompson here is where Kamloops is located. And this is part of a much larger map, Indians of North America. There it shows the, the lake uh, area that I talked about, um, cut off, carved out of the former shoe swap territory, which extended, uh, according to Tate, in his, on his first map down in this area. Uh, I was hesitant to show this map because of the poor quality, I'm sorry, of the resolution, but it's an important map that uh, needed to be shown. It's titled The Sovereign Indigenous Nations Territorial Boundaries by the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, made in 1993. So this is probably the first map made by uh, a Native organization of uh, covering the whole of British Columbia and actually some of Alberta. Um, and here's the Sequepnik territory. Let me go back to that. Again, you can see that it doesn't include the, the lakes area, um, the Sequepnik. Uh, and notice also the names uh, are different from those previous uh, 19th century colonial names. Uh, Sequepnik is the is the name they call themselves. It actually means uh, spread out people or scattered people. And so this is a map produced by um, a First Nations organization, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. Um, it has some flaws and uh, unfortunately, uh, they contacted various First Nations groups for input and not all of those groups uh, replied. So uh, the map uh, sort of fell out of favor, you might say, um, but other newer maps have, have been produced. But one map that uh, uh, sort of comes at the same time as that Union of BC Indian Chiefs map is the map of treaties being negotiated in British Columbia. And uh, I'm not showing you the full map here, but um, you can see that there are boundaries that uh, denote the territorial um, areas uh, agreed to by these First Nations. Now, some of them um, don't uh, butt to one another. In other words, there's uh, uh, unceded territory as uh, Sequapic territory is, 
here. This whole area is unseated also with the Okanagan, except for this uh, treaty negotiation with the uh, people of the Okanagan centered on Kelowna. That's the West Bank First Nation. Um, so you can see this is a rather unsatisfactory map because it doesn't show the full picture of, uh, of native uh, or of First Nations cultural areas in British Columbia. The, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs map was much better in that it was uh, contiguous. But we have to recognize this map. Uh, it's still current. Well, it was current as of November 2017 in the treaty negotiations uh, with Canada and British Columbia. This is a much uh, easier map to to appreciate um, by Lyle Wilson. Uh, he's a Coast Salish uh, fellow who produced this map for the Museum of Anthropology at UBC. And it nicely shows the um, First Nations with their names um, and their areas uh, using a dashed line, uh, which is better, I think. And um, well, uh, I just think it's a very pleasant map. Uh, yeah, Lyle was an artist, however, so he wanted to create this wonderful border around the, the map, but um, the focus is on, on those First Nations. And another similar map that uh, was produced by the Ministry of Education in 1996, uh, again showing the uh, latest information about those First Nations and the spelling of their names, uh, Silcochin, Sequetmuk, Statlium, Inilakapamuk, Okanagan, Tanaha. Um, so uh, this received input um, by those First Nations and uh, I think is uh, one of the better productions. Also, it doesn't use lines or dashes between the First Nations, or rather it's sort of a muted coloration, which I think is, is um, valid. Now, <laughs> With the digital age upon us, uh, we get into um, interactive maps. And this one you may know about uh, titled Native Land uh, by a company called Mapster. Um, and you can zoom in and uh, locate your place on the map. But I find it, and I think a lot of people find it rather unsatisfactory. Um, it, it's too sort of... Uh, muddy for my, for my liking. Um, so this map also I don't think is in great use uh, today. Um, this is a fine map, uh, a static map produced by Joanne Hammond. Uh, she works for the Skeechiston uh, uh, Department of Natural Resources in Skeechiston, one of the uh, Sequepmic reserves. And uh, she's a fine cartographer who shows, uh, for example, the Sinai area using this sort of uh, hash line and, and other areas uh, where the Sequepmig uh, uh, once, uh, once were uh, once inhabited. And she has a legend showing all those different areas, uh, what has happened to them over time including uh, out west, the Silcotine, um, the shoe swap uh, were forced to uh, around the time of the smallpox epidemics of 1862 were forced east and the Silcotine took over, took over that area. Then um, I wanna mention this wonderful map produced by Margaret Pierce here. Uh, she's a Potawatomi citizen. Um, she works uh, or worked at the Canadian Center, American Center at the University of Maine um, in 1917 and um, produced this map, which is laden with indigenous names. It's, it's all indigenous. 
And she contacted many of these um, First Nations across the country for their input. Um, she wanted to be careful that she was creating a map, uh, even though she's Indigenous herself, creating a map that uh, was far beyond what uh, we have seen um, in the colonial past. And um, uh, you can order this map. I would suggest you go to this site and um, you can order the map uh, and uh, appreciate it in its fullest. And then we have another uh, fellow, uh, Aaron Carapella from the Cherokee Nation. Um, he's been producing maps that looked like this of the whole of North America. Here we have the Pacific Northwest and tribal divisions in this area. Now, uh, my only complaint about this map is that the uh, names, which are uh, authentic uh, indigenous names up to date, um, are in different font sizes, suggesting one is larger, one group is larger than the other. And, and that's not so, because here we have Sequamic, which is one of the larger groups in British Columbia, and it's, it's not shown as... Uh, uh, large as, as some of these, like the, the Dene up here. But otherwise, it's a, a wonderful map. And so, as I say, he's produced maps for um, most of the United States, different areas of the United States and, and North America as a whole. And you've probably seen these maps. Uh, I've noticed them in libraries and schools. So um, he, he's running a commercial uh, business producing these maps but uh, he's quite uh, careful about his work. And then finally, um, we have uh, this map, which is an interactive map online by the First Peoples Cultural Foundation, a map of language groups. But it's more than that. Um, so what you can do is zoom in on uh, the area of interest. Here's Sequemic Chin. Now, Sequemic Chin is the language of the Sequemic people. So here we have languages shown, but it will also show communities uh, when you zoom in on it. There's a lot of data. Um, and I find this, as opposed to that former interactive map, um, much more pleasing and useful and user-friendly. So um, I wrote an article in Cartouche in 2000, 2020, and um, you can have a look at that. If you have any questions, I'd be pleased to answer. Thanks, Ken. Um, I left in the chat uh, a little message to everyone, our participants. Uh, you can leave any questions here in the chat and we can read them to our presenters. Great presentation, Ken, thank you. Oh, thank you. Should I stop my share now? Sure, thanks. Ken, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, have you come across the map by uh, Alexander Caulfield Anderson, um, who, who was not only a cartographer, I believe for the Hudson Bay Company, but um, then used one of his maps to try to highlight the different um, tribal groups that he encountered along the way using a, his own sort of um, orthography. So that was one of the maps I was thinking of. And then the second one, if you could speak to, um, was the work of um, A.G. Maurice, uh, Father A.G. Maurice of the Oblates. Um, could you speak to a couple of those uh, cartographers? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm familiar uh, with A.C. Anderson and his map, and it's a wonderful map, and I didn't show it. Uh, I did have a, a digital copy of it, uh, but it's so detailed, it's hard, uh, hard to read. Uh, 
unless you have very high resolution. Uh, so I didn't include that. But yes, uh, I don't know about the second uh, map you mentioned that he did. Uh, on the first map, his 1867 map, he does show indigenous nations and and boundaries. Um, they're hard to pick out. Uh, yes, uh, uh, doesn't show as far as I can remember the, the boundaries between, and it's a wonderful map uh, uh, for all the detail of Northern British Columbia. Thanks, Ken. Um, I think we have some connection issues, but I don't know if it was on your side or my side, so I'll just keep keep going there. We've got a couple questions, uh, two from Peter Stockdale asking in the chat there, most maps represent colonial boundaries like provinces. How can mapping be used for decoloniz decolonization? How do you deal with inter-Indigenous competition for territory? <laughs> Uh, well, that's hard to answer. Um, I know that uh, most of those maps, including the modern maps, uh, you know, use uh, modern base maps, for example, of British Columbia, um, to then show the indigenous nations. And um, I think that that works uh, for the most part. Um, as for, um, I showed you the map of the treaty uh, process, uh, which includes uh, a lot of unceded territory. Um, I haven't seen a, a map that simply shows um, without all the boundaries like the treaty uh, process uh, likes to show um, of unceded territories versus territories that have been that have been treated. So uh, that would be important to uh, produce. Uh, I don't know if that answers your second question. 